In this video, I want to reevaluate how I'm playing my audio and my particles. I'm hitting a point where it's starting to feel like a little bit too many variables and, and too much and too much micromanagement. And I think it might be a better idea to play some of these looping particles and looping sounds through a component rather than a variable. So at a certain point, you may have to reconsider as you're adding functionality, whether we need to offload some of this into a component that will be shared across everything, or if you do want to require lots and lots of variables. In my case, I think I can cut out my looping movement and my looping particle. And what I mean by this is instead of inside of my blueprint right here, where we are, where I am asking for the designer to set a movement sound and a movement particle, I think it makes more sense that the designer can just set that inside of the component and they can put it in there. So what we want to do is on this moving platform and the designer wants to decide they want this looping sound. So we'll give this one a, um, the light hum. That. And I want this to play not, and I don't really need it over here as a variable. So I'm going to remove this and I'm just going to put my looping sound directly into that to just clear out some of this. So once I've done this, my audio, I'm still going to activate it and deactivate it in the same way. So as long as auto activate is turned off, you can go into your blueprint and all we need to do is get rid of this one time that we are setting this new movement particle in there. And we just need to go into our blueprint and remove this particular spot where we're setting the movement in there. So if we delete this, let's look at what we have now. We have our audio component, right? our audio component, we just wanna say whatever's in there, we just want it to play. So now the designer can just put their audio in here and whether or not you wanna give it a default is up to you, but it will just play whatever is set inside the audio component and everything else. So the play sound at location or the play stop sound at location, this is all just spawning a different one and doesn't really relate to this. We're just using this as a location, not from the play function. Okay, so once we do that, I wanna show you another trick. We want to get rid of our movement sound, our looping one. So we just wanna take this out of the list right here. Uh, right here, our movement sound, we just don't care about that. It's not really doing anything in our blueprint anymore. But we can double check that if we come over here and we right click and we say find references, it should tell us where the references are in this blueprint. And if there are any, then we'll see them listed. But because we're not using any, we can pretty safely just delete this, pile safe. So let's test this out. We are going to preemptively put on our audio component, our looping audio, so the designer can do this. And we are just telling this to activate or deactivate through blueprints. So it is pretty subtle, at least the looping part. It's pretty subtle, but it is playing and activating and deactivating where we want it to. So let's do the same thing with our movement particle. And I'll show you this. If you right click and you do find references, you, you can see where it's referenced in your blueprint. So then you can just double click it. It's a pretty handy way of finding where you're using your variables. So we need to get rid of this one. So we're only using it right here. We just don't need to set it into the template. We just wanna play sound location and then continue on to that. So now we can delete this. And what this is doing, this is saying my particle component, this thing right here, activate whatever particle is already inside of there. So we can leave the default empty, but we want to allow the designer to click on the particle system and load in whatever looping particle they want. So in this case, I want my sparks. Okay. And I think another thing that makes sense to me is let's relabel these to what they are doing at the moment. So we'll right click and say looping audio. And I'm just setting F2 for the hotkey. You could also do right click rename. Looping particle. Okay, so now that that's a little bit more clear, we can compile save, double check inside of our event graph. Okay, looping particle. Looping audio, all right. 
you can reconfigure some of this. I'm fine with it. I think that's all right. Okay, now we need to make sure that we are not putting anything into the particle and it looks like we're not. And when we stop, we are just telling the audio component to stop and the particle to stop. And I think that's all we need here. Compile save. What we need to do now is just make sure that we're not using our movement particle anywhere. We are not, so we can safely delete that. So we've cut down on our number of variables, which are kind of scary to the designer sometimes. So we uh, look back over here. See, now we have a start sound, a stop sound, a start particle, a stop particle, and a movement curve. And if they want to do anything with the looping audio, they can still customize this per actor instance. Okay, so I think that simplifies everything a little bit. Let's test it out. Okay, great. And you can see how we have sparks in that one, but not on this one. That's because we don't have anything inside of the looping audio or the looping particle. So now if we want to bring back our looping audio or our looping particle, we just need to put it over here. So I like this better. I think it cuts down on some of our variables, but I think it's a good thing to start considering, can you offload this functionality into a component versus a variable? Because this is very valuable real estate in, inside of your blueprint.